All right, we're going to show you our first mimic at least where it is. Going to fight a couple of gargoyles. Where that's obviously one and two. Uh, we'll show you the best way to get through and around through here, uh, and even how to get rid of these guys. Welcome to Smash Games. This is Dark Souls Remastered, and we're here with part 11 of our casual guide. Anyway, just going to take this opportunity to say thank you to anyone who's liked, commented, shared, and subscribed. If you could at least do that, if you're a new follower, if you could follow, that'd be great. I would really appreciate it. It helps the channel immensely. Uh, now, if you do talk to that um, imp, that flying imp, you can go back down to Sen's Fortress that way. That is to say, if... Um so basically, if you don't go through and defeat Ornstein and Smog, for example, and then collect the, um, the Golden Bowl, which then allows you to... Uh, then, well, once it's placed, I should say, under uh, in Filing Shrine, then you'll be able to fast travel. But for now, because we start, we have to go back down regardless, um, you'll need to talk to the Imp again to actually go back down, which will take it down. But that is why we unlocked the elevator in Sans Fortress, so it's a quicker, easier way to get down <clears throat> for us in the meantime. Anyway, <coughs> pardon me. And these large uh, sentinel knights at first um, can be pretty uh, daunting. However, you can just bait them like I did by very slowly walking up to a corner of one. And as you can see, you can basically strafe slash run around them. Looks like from memory. And then I'm using the claymore here, so after about three hits they should stagger. Pretty confident you can parry them if they're thrusting at you, but the overhand chop and, and definitely not the shield. Um, but yeah, do be aware of the shield. So the best thing you can do is if they are, if you find yourself out of step, just roll a couple of times, and by the second roll you should be out of the little shockwave, so to speak. So as long as you get your dodges down and your, you know, basic awareness timing and all that, you should be should be okay. So hopefully by now, if you're using the claymore, you should be adjusted a bit to it, to some degree. But I'm also just going to demonstrate, if you don't have the claymore, if you're using the drag sword still, that you can still take down these guys. Ideally at this point though, the drag sword is, will show that uh, you will do be starting to do a lot less damage. And uh, it will be taking quite a few more hits in general. But uh, yeah, by the towards the end of Anna Londo, we will be getting towards upgrading the uh, halberd <clears throat> to at least. Well, first of all, we'd have to get we have to go back to. Um, our other smith in the uh, Undead Parish, because I didn't realize, of course, it needs to be at least a plus 10 halberd before we can uh, upgrade it further. Because uh, we're going to go for a <clears throat> lightning halberd. Anyway, now we're making our way to the first uh, bonfire of Anna Londo and uh, this will give you a plus 10 seeing so there is a keeper down here I was about to say maiden but we're not playing Elden Ring right now you are a rare visitor. If you seek she doesn't have a whole lot to say at this stage although you will get quite a bit more dialogue out of her depending on what you do in the game you'll find out towards the end of Anna Londo, to be fair. Anyway, we're just um, getting our uh, attunement up, so we can at least have four slots. And then we're going to start doing our faith a little bit as well. Because we want to be able to use the... Um, well, at least the cure poison. And then there's a couple other 
interesting spells we can use as well, but we won't be delving too far into that. We're only just doing a few points here and there now to <clears throat> round out our character. So again, bait these guys, go to the corner, as it were, and essentially rinse and repeat. And in Smash Games fashion, we're going to fast forward this a little bit. Because, you know, once you've seen it a few times, you sort of get the idea. Just simply rinsing and repeating. But as you can see, I'm continuing to use the Claymore just to show that ideally it is better than the Drake Sword. Um, you can, you could in theory definitely use the Halberd if you've upgraded it. Um, I just find that the Claymore has a better move set, particularly against these guys, because the Halberd you'll find actually has a thrusting effect that goes towards the ground. Um, but much like uh, your Pyromancy, so if you aim up with the camera, you can actually aim higher. Now, this is our first Mimic. You can tell by that chain. See how it's straight-ish and not curled like a C, like a... Anyway, you get the idea. The other thing is too, if you look very closely to the gap in the chest of the like where the lid part of it is, you can see the mimic breathing. Okay. <laughs> to note also that the more you can, as you, we will max out our. Um, <clears throat> our hand, our pyromancy hand. Um, for every time you do upgrade it, you're you're doing more damage. So, <clears throat> with any and all pyromancy, so comes in quite handy with the you know the great chaos fireball. Now, down the lift we go. Our first lift. Uh, I believe I'm just showing you the uh, scenery. Now. For a 2011, 2012 game, don't quote me, that's approximately, because I know it's 2009 for um, Demon Souls that that came out. The um, Some graphics are still quite, quite awesome to look at. Uh, now, mind you, this is of course the remastered version, but it's... A, in some ways it holds up. Realistically, it's not until we get to Dark Souls 2, and particularly Dark Souls 3, that we see the uh, significant difference in in graphics, uh, particularly because although Dark Souls 2 also got a remaster, well, not a remaster, technically more of an upgrade to, to me, um, it, it definitely had some better graphics, um, but you don't see the full effect until uh, Dark Souls 3, where it was more specific, where it was definitely specifically made for uh, PlayStation 4 and uh, Xbox One. Anyway, these guys basically have all the same tactics, except that they fire lightning as opposed to fire, so. That in there. Um, is a little bit different, of course, and they both have a tail. That's right, there is two of them. There we go. Gargoyle Helm, very, very good helmet. Um, we're going to make our way around here. Uh, from memory, it's the Demon Titan Knight. So we pick up another one. Now, as in respects to mimics, uh, apart from that first one, there will be. Let me just try to think. One, two. At, at, at least two more in the upper Analondo Castle. And it, not until we get to. Oh, I forget what it's called. It's the other magic castle mansion up the up the mountain more essentially uh, also if you keep your camera angle down and looking up 
it shouldn't actually shake. In you pr advisable just to go slow in general because it does shake it a little bit. The idea is that it's part of the effect that it will push you off. But if you look at that angle, it ac should not actually hurt you. Or you can put the rusted ring on to give you added stability. This area in particular is probably my, my one of my most despised areas simply for the uh, narrow <clears throat> walkways. I think they're called catwalks. Not 100% sure. I'm not too familiar with my uh, building knowledge. Uh, so at this point, I don't advise parrying, nor do I really advise swinging with your weapon. What I do advise is, if you've got your pyromancies, if you do have any spells, uh, arch archery, crossbow, um, yeah, daggers even, you know, something to throw at them. Particularly from this angle, your short bow should be enough. Now, you will have to angle it just to the left, of the head and maybe even slightly above and you can actually take out this guy and push him off as long as you get the headshot if you don't get the headshot he won't actually fall off but in this case we did so anyway just a little 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 piece of cheese just swapping the bow back over You could try and kick them off. I don't advise that too much because you've got to really sort of fiddle with being on their side a little bit and kicking them. And if they get you, you then you have the better chance of falling off. So this guy here I actually managed to cheese him off the corner. So that's also... A, you can do that too. Anyway, continue to make our way up. You can certainly roll off, jump off. And uh, we're just going through this first fog gate to basically show you where our platform is our um, essentially there's three levels so you've got well it's four technically but you've got this you got the next one down um, from where we'll be able to walk across to and from the our previous bonfire there and the main castle I mean, there's not a lot of methods to really handle these guys with ease, just, you know. That's another reason the claymore's nice in this respect, because it does swing down, like top to down, and you can obviously thrust um, to avoid hitting the walls. The um, halberd does have a similar effect, but again, it, it's only just like a single poke. And if you go to swing again, it does a big wide sweep. Obviously, yeah. Now I'm just demonstrating that, you know, although it will hit the stairs, so that's that's the other problem with that. Anyway. Just take them out. And here we pick up another golden... What is it? Oh, what was it? Ah, oh, Divine Blessing. Yeah, I knew it was gold, at least. Not like golden in name. Anyway. Showing you one of the uses for the binoculars that we picked up at, in the, at the start of our guide. That is one of them. That's one of the uses. There is a animated version of you know, there is the the um, human slash giant form of the princess that you will get to <laughs> greet, meet. Anyway, you do obviously have to come out here. You do actually have to activate it to bring it down. But once you have activated any of those other gears on other levels, once you've actually pushed them, will bring this platform to you so that you can hop on. But now, as you can see, it's uh, 
setting itself up so that's on the level that we need it on the most and here is our second gargoyle and you should be able to get a plunging attack on him once he drops yes unfortunately didn't stagger him I was very surprised by that actually Use these um, stairs to your advantage, of course. It's always quite helpful. Just realised I might have a better time listening if I connect my headphones to the TV. But anyway, as you can see, they you can make. I mean, they're not the. They're certainly not the easiest creatures to take out, but they they get better. They get easier over time. But anyway, we now make our way down. Just going to show you with the other bonfire. There's, I believe, three in total, which is not on this level particularly. Uh, it's actually on the next level below. But for now, we're just going to pick up. Um, can't remember his name. He's essentially this, the way the story sort of develops is that the guy that we used to take on the Iron Golem in, uh, at the top of Sen's Fortress. Iron Tarkus or something, I think? Yeah. Uh, essentially, he's broken in through that window that we used at the top of this hall to get through. So basically, where we walked up top, that broken window we got to get in here, he broke through. And so what's happened is, he's fallen to his death. So, at the top left corner there you'll see one of the painted guardians uh, guarding a corpse which is actually his body so so the other reason we obviously chopped down the chandel the massive chandelier was so we can get the other item which is a sorcery um, and then yeah we get iron Tarkas's full set including his uh, shield and sword You can just bait these guys like I did, and then, you know, more or less kill them. I don't particularly... Uh, like, you can definitely parry them for sure like that, but it's just that obviously with daggers they do tend to be a little bit quicker, so unless you're pretty confident, go for it. And to be fair, I'm, as I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a pro at it, so it's, it's like, you know... It's, it's good sometimes, sometimes it's just very average. But anyway, um, you don't have to kill them all. You can walk at a distance to the left there, um, if you walk quite slowly. Ideally, you want to try and keep your health up if you can. Not, not like what I've done there at uh, one-fifth of my health bar. Mind you, if you want to be one of those players where you use, say, like, Power Within and the Strength Ring, I think it's the Red Tier Ring, and, you know, other stuff like that. Basically, if you have your health below a certain point, while you're doing, say, like, a Strength Build, you can get a lot of damage. But, you're also... The thing with power within from memory, it does take away health gradually, so you know, it's not ideal. But anyway, that's that's just some things I've seen. I I saw this was years ago, I saw one uh guy basically <clears throat> 
one-shotting every practically every boss in the game and i think at one point he got to sense fortress for the iron golem and he tried a few different tactics to actually beat him and found that yeah he just he just couldn't quite um get it in one go i can't remember i think it was like his third or fourth attempt he tried he was just trying different stuff and eventually he uh, I think it was he put like a buff on his weapon as well, so I think that obviously really helped. But uh, yeah, now that massive painting I was just looking at is um, I want to say it's Ari Ariamas. <coughs> I could be completely wrong. <laughs> But yeah, we will be actually going back there at, that, at some point. And that's what we needed the peculiar doll from the asylum for. That is, in fact, a key to allow us to go through the said painting. So, yes, if there's any Elden Rings players there, you're seeing all those paintings. Very much a Souls trope. Um, I think actually there might have been one or two in Demon Souls from memory. So, I still consider Demon Souls to be of the lineup of the Souls games. You know, it's kind of like what the turning point when, you know, FromSoft began. So I'm just showing you the other bonfire. There's a ring there in the corner. I do believe if you have a torch or a spell that casts light, for example, um, you can open that back area up. I do actually attempt to try and open it, but I forgot that I needed a, a light source of some description. The only other thing I can think of, uh, the uh, the light is unless you've got the DLC. But realistically, if you've bought Dark Souls Remastered, then it'll have the DLC, so it's, it'll be attached. <laughs> anyway, yeah, we just dropped another one into Faith. So ideally, we're going to go for 16, 16 Faith, and then we will. Mm, I'll have to let you know more as we progress because at this at this point, some. Sometimes I do go on the fly a little bit. I, generally speaking, when I do play, particularly Dark Souls 1, I do go for a little bit of a cleric, a little bit of a pyromancy, and a... a build, essentially. Anyway. So yeah, I thought I'd just explain, you know, while I'm... Attempting to bash at a wall and nothing's happening, so you actually just don't have the item. But, you know. The funny thing is, we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to get in there without it, really, because um, we, don't, we don't actually need it. So by the end of Anna Londo, we'll, I'll, you'll be able to get in there, so. Uh, mind you. Uh, if you want to join the Dark Moon Covenant, which is through there, you will need to then try and access that. Because um, that's that's the... Oops. That's, you know, how you join that Covenant. Um, but, uh, yeah, the, I do believe that's also one of the trophies, if you're going for the full trophy guide, for example. I do tend to just... <laughs> run, I was going to say, run past them. Got caught on his shield. These are also some of the most annoying creatures, to be honest. It's the fact that when you run up to swing at them, they just jump, and then they do like a plunging attack, which, and their weapons are coated with, like, lightning. Although, if you do manage to actually get them while in their air, it will stagger them, like, like every time, so... That's the one cool thing about it. But uh, also, if you've got the um, the clerical spell force, it's quite handy as well with these guys because it does actually knock them down as opposed to just staggering them back. The other thing is, you can most certainly make these runs down here and run past them. However, generally speaking, you will almost with confidence get hit just like that for example the other thing is to do not stand too long if you do make a pass there because obviously those silver 
knights will shoot at you. And I believe for most Souls players, this is you know, back when they were probably first doing it. This is probably the quintessential test, as well as also in Smog. But this is like where you start to get into the Souls game, as it were. Now, I put the wolf ring on for that extra 40 points of poise, but I don't think it's actually enough to stop us from, say, taking an arrow or a swing from them and getting staggered. Because realistically, if you get sh hit by one of these arrows, it will knock you off or, you know, in a straight line backwards from when, wherever it's hit you from. So or from this angle, you will, you'll be dead. Now, like I said before, you can roll and roll through it, just like so. Actually, genuinely surprised the other one doesn't shoot that, you know, clips me with an arrow. But unfortunately, I'm going for the parry here, and yeah. As you can see, it didn't work that at that point. But um, if you do time it, so for example, like the second attempt like so you don't have to parry like that you can just you know wait your time because the emit the for the force spell doesn't actually take that long to cast anyway for this one more often than not by the time you start to bait him if you're getting towards this corner and he starts to swing at you across the little corner gap he should just drop But I mean, that was mostly because I was clearly struggling to beat him, so yeah, whatever. <laughs> ah, this is me getting confused, because I swapped the um, talisman to the right hand so I could have the shield in the left. So basically I could still block and cast. Is it. I do suggest that, of course, if you're going to do use the force. <coughs> May the 4th, May the 4th, but yeah, anyway. Uh, now you can most definitely touch that rusted ring, it'll make it a lot easier, should give you a little bit of peace of mind coming down to get this soul packet. This is a hero soul packet worth 10,000 souls, so it is worth it, in my opinion. Particularly because we're at that point now where this is at least a level, if you, you know, get my meaning. Anyway, we're just making our way around the corner. Roll down. Do be careful. I'd suggest not running per se, but we certainly can. Go through this fog wall and go take your first left, left door. There's our other bonfire. And Solaire, have you had of already talked to him, you know? Smooth summoning out there. Anytime you see my brilliantly shining signature, do not hesitate to call upon me. You've left me with quite an impression. I would relish a chance to assist you. You really are fond of chatting with me, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd think you had feelings for me. Oh no, dear me, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> Alright, we're going to end it right there. We're going to pick this up in the next part as we are halfway through Analondo and uh, yeah we will I'll see you guys soon bye